Hi there, welcome to uh, another edition of the Chaos Chamber. Um, this week we are uh, continuing the series on making uh, sigils from your own name. Um, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is my book, The Sigil Secret. It explains everything I'm talking about here in, in great depth. Um, it's available from uh, Trapos Books in London and from Amazon. Um, also from my publisher, uh, Palasia Publications. Um, and the, the, you can see the website at the back, sigilsecret.com. Go there. There's loads of cool free things you can have. Anyway, so today uh, what I'm going to do is make a planetary sigil from my own name. Planetary, using planetary squares um, is one of my favourite things to do because the sigils just look amazing. Uh, so the first thing we need to do, I'm going to put this away for a second. And underneath is my Ouija board. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, in, on page 89 of the Sigil Secret, there's a way of making gematria sigils, which is turning letters into numbers. Um, on a previous video, I did that. So um, we're going to do that today. We're going to convert, we're going to get rid of the vowels and the, comp, uh, the duplicate consonants, convert the letters into numbers, and then use the square of Saturn to make a sigil. Um, I'm using the square of Saturn because it's the, the smallest one. Um, it's very easy to use. Um, I may do with some bigger sigils at one point or another, but um, Saturn's a fairly straightforward one, especially if you're practicing. So again, we take, so we take out all the vowels and the duplicates. So we end up with M, R, K, V, C, N, T. There we are. So, if we turn to page 89, we can use the Pythagorean table. Uh, M is number four. R is number nine. K is number two. V is number four. C is number three. N is number five. And T is number two. So again, you can see on the, the page the correspondence, the corresponding numbers with letters, and it has some different tables and some examples of sigils produced from those things. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the duplicate numbers on this because when I'm making a planetary sigil, conversely to when I'm making a number sigil, I want as few numbers as possible. So I'm going to get rid of the two, because we've got two of them. I'm going to get rid of the four. So we've got four, nine, three, five, two. Okay. So if we look here very closely, um, now let's see if I can zoom in easily enough. Does that work? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's bring this underneath. There we go. Technology. So what I'm going to do is I'll draw it on here. It's a good idea to get these laminated, by the way, because you can practice on them. So we're going to start on the four, and then we're going to go across to the nine, and then down to the three, across to the five, and up to the two. There we go. Very easy. Circle to start, line to end. And that is what my sigil looks like as a planetary square. So again, I'll replicate it here. That is my Saturn alien. Okay, so let me zoom out as I've done that. There we go. So I've done a little replica of that there. That's my Saturn alien sigil for my name. So if I was doing a magical working of transformation or something using the influence of Saturn, I might use that sigil. So I'm going to, let's do it on Jupiter as well. Now you'll notice some of a lot of these planets, let's zoom in again. A lot of these planets have got big numbers on them. That is when in, in, in the book. There we are, the sigil secret, scroll up and down. Um, in, in the book, there's lots of different tables, but we're going to stick with this one for the minute. Let's use, oh, I've not used Mars before, so, so let's do something with that. Um, so we start on number four, which is here, 
And then we go to number nine, which is there. Up to number three. Where's five? There it is. Five. And then down to two. There we go. And there's my Martian sigil. So if I zoom out. Let's see if I can freehand this one. Beautiful. So there's my Saturn, it's right underneath Mars. There we go, Saturn and Mars, very easy. Let's do one more. Um, so let's do one using the square of the sun because that is my square uh, for many, many reasons. I use it all the time. Um, so let's zoom in again. So it's quite a big square. It's not as big as the moon, which is enormous. But again, you'll find every time you use a different square, you get a different type of sigil. OK, so you can see this has been used a lot before. So we're going to start on number four, which is here. And go up to number nine. And then go all the way up to three. And it should be a bit more angular, but I'll sort that out afterwards. Where's number five? It's all the way down there. Uh, four nine three five and then two. Oh, interesting crosses over. So I will zoom out, transfer that across. So it would be more like this four nine and then eight, even sort of a clear delineating angle. Come back down and then go across like that. So there are the originals that I've done on there. There are the three full versions. I think they look pretty cool. Um, actually, I, 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 I love planetary sigils. Um, I just think they look really very, very cool. Um, very interesting to use. Oh, sorry, the camera angle has shifted very slightly. Let's adjust that and come all the way out. There we go, good. So you have the, the Sigil of Saturn, Sigil of Mars, Sigil of the Sun of my naming. So depending on what I'm doing, if I was doing something that required a lot of uh, forceful energy, I might use that. Creativity, wealth, you know, you just look up the correspondences. And, and again, with the book, there's a table of correspondences that comes that can help you look up all of these things. So try it out. Um, in the next video, I'm going to do a, a little, little something about... Um, why you might make a naming sigil um, but there you go so if you enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video cheers